Welcome back to the dish. Whitney week at Saratoga, a bunch of other stakes too. And as usual, when I dish, we dish with the Paddock Prince himself, David Levitch. Happy Hambletonian week. Yeah, I'm going for happy Whitney week, not happy Hamb um, Hambletonian week, but happy. Happy to I mean, week you got too. me all in a cluster now with my words. Um, happy Hambletonian week to you. Thank you. Yeah, well, uh, I'll be in Jersey this weekend, certainly watching Saratoga. They got a huge simulcast set up at the Meadowlands. It's uh, a lot of yelling at the TVs. It's actually a lot of fun. So Cross country pick five, right? Cross country pick five. Going to preview that with Ray Catolo later this week. Not sure how the split will work. They actually had three standard bread races when they did it with Pace Night. Not sure if it'll be two and three again, but have to think the Hamiltonian and Oaks will be a part of it. Certainly the Whitney. Last year we had Life is Good. This year we have another, I presume, big favorite in Cody's Wish. Yeah, I would say he's probably going to be. I mean, the field, I'm sure everybody saw. Maybe you didn't. Wes Willpower got hurt in a workout, so he's done for his career. He won't be running, so that'll take – I don't know if he was going to run to begin with, but with him out of the race, I'm sure he'll be one to five, two to five in the race. You'll have charge it in there as well. Zandon saw White of Barrios join in the field, and then Dale Romans might run a horse. But yeah, I know. Yeah, so who's the pace now, though? I mean, I'm sure charge it's the pace. I would think so. I don't know why they wouldn't send him. He's right. actually, I know he had a walkover pretty much in the suburban <laughs> against that field, but I mean, he was on the pace. Um, most of his race is going a mile, so I'm sure he'll be the pace in that race. And then Cody's Wishel, who's never won it two turns, but he's obviously a much more. He's won it two turns, just Where? not beyond a mile. Where at? The oh, dirt the dirt mile, mile, dirt mile, mile. Yeah. yeah, yeah, dirt mile, yeah. But he was trying two turns at an early point of his career, and he's obviously a much better horse now. Bill Mott, I'm sure, has been training him to get two turns, and – I don't know. We'll see. I don't think we'll have a problem with it, but he is going to be a short price trying something that he's never really succeeded at. So if you're trying to take a chance against him, I understand. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I go into every race he's in thinking, Oh, maybe this is the time to go against him." And for contest purposes on Belmont stakes day, I actually did weigh and in a little higher in the wind spot. Uh, so I guess I kind of went against him. I just figured that was a chance to, you know, maybe go for a win in the contest and, Cody's wish was, wish was much the best, but then the the PPs actually come out and you see it in black and white and you look at the other numbers, Ragazin, whatever, and he just towers over this group and there aren't any new names here where it's like, well, maybe that one. I guess if anything, it's the nine furlongs, but everything I've seen, other than the fact that Mott hasn't tried it yet, everything says this horse should handle nine furlongs. Yeah, I don't know if there'll be a problem with it at this point in his career. I mean, the only chance I think he could lose is maybe if Charger really has turned the corner and he gets a lone lead and he's just walking out there. I mean, he's a very good horse who's run some big races, but he's kind of in and out. You never know what to expect from him. <laughs> Cody's wish, like elite power, they just win every time they run, and they're very consistent. Um, so, yeah, I don't really see a reason that – I guess the price in the nine furlongs is the only question, but on paper – He's bred for the distance. He's an absolute monster. His, I'm, I'm, I think he's the best horse in training. So we'll see. And, no, and, I, and you know, even if I it agree. doesn't get nine furlongs, at least they're trying. A lot of people need to try. At least yep. they're trying. Love it. Yeah, I, lo I love the try. I mean, that's th this is the race. If you want to claim you're the best horse in training, I mean, obviously the Breeders' Cup Classic come November, but this is the one at this point in the calendar uh, that you should circle, and they did. And uh, makes it exciting whether he's two to five or not. Uh, you mentioned, uh, or I'm thinking in my head, uh, charge it maybe on the lead. Reminds me a little bit of the dandy. Saudi crown certainly looked alone and mostly was. Forte came and got him. And I, I sort of think that that's the trip that could win here. Uh, I mean, Cody's wish is going to have to come and get him. I think he's able to. Two to five, maybe too short to take, but it seems like we're in for sort of a repeat of the dandy. Yeah, not even just the dandy. The um, elite power running down Gunite in the um, Vanderbilt. I mean, yeah. he had a four-length head start turn for home, and elite <laughs> power just came and got him. And, I mean, Gunite's probably the second-best sprinter in the country, and he's no slouch. So, elite power doing that, it's probably going to be the same situation with um, elite power, I mean, um, Cody's wish. And honestly, if it doesn't work out, they can just go back to um, one turn races in the dirt mile. But if it does work out, then you can start to point to the classic because he's already won the dirt mile. So 
I know I'm talking obvious here, but I just think it's it's good for racing too because the older division really needs some better handicap horses. I would say, especially with how West Willpower, who was coming off a monster race in the Stephen Foster, right? And there was chatter overseas of August Rodin, uh considering the class. Coolmore would consider the classic, and he laid a, a huge egg. Uh, so you know, who knows what the international competition is going to be like? Uh, back to Saturday's races, real quick, vis a vis what we might see on uh test and Whitney day. Cause Maple leaf Mel probably going to be a, a short price in the test. No, pretty mischievous is running. Oh, that's pretty right. The Oaks winner. Showing and up. how about that for a, uh, we're talking about Cody's witch stretching out, but the Oaks winner and a, Ac- what she want the acorns at one turn mile. So I get it, but still that's, I think that's pretty sporty to, to tackle this spot. Yeah, did I drink? No, the acorn. They they switched the acorn to mile sixteenth. Oh, mile sixteenth. It is yeah, one they turn. They switched though. it. Yes, yeah, yeah, it's one turn. But and you have um, money's gold is cutting back, and there's another filly in there that's escaped. Wow. Darth Vader, the horse that pretty mischievous beat. Salty. D- Darth Vader's running too, so it's looking like to be the a good test because last couple last year wasn't very good. So it's nice that we're gonna get a really, really good field there. You also have the Saratoga Derby this weekend. You have Farbridge coming back. The horse that came third for Kaman is running. I don't know if Tis there's the any bombs year. running. Who? Tis the bomb. Where at? Saratoga. In what race? No idea. I w- well, I, w- I was told he's running. I just assumed it was Saratoga, but maybe there's some turf stakes at Monmouth or something. Yeah, that's, I forgot that horse was still in trading. You just cut me off with talking about Tiz the Bomb. Um, <laughs> I don't know what Europeans are coming to the Saratoga Derby, but and I don't know if anybody's peaked at this. The card Friday, I'm not just saying this, it's the best card of the meet so far. Well, I mean, I, I did see Andy say that, so... you. Not, not that Andy is in sharp, but your Andy. your words carry a little more weight because you would say if it stinks and he wouldn't. Yeah, that's very true. But if you look <laughs> at that pick five, which has the Saratoga Oaks now, it's on Friday. So they I, I don't remember if it was on – I think it was on the Whitney Day last year. So they moved it to Friday. But it is a very, very good card. And then Saturday you have the test, Saratoga Derby. I think Saratoga Derby Saturday and then the yep. Whitney Saturday. I didn't know if it was Sunday. So I don't know. What features on Sunday? Uh, don't know. War, Warlike Goddess runs at some point this week. Yeah, Glen right? Falls. She's trying to win um, three straight Glen's Falls, I think. Whenever that is. Well, uh, pick five wise, though, and that you mentioned before we came on, it was a sore subject, but have to point it out because in the Whitney, we're going to have a really short price. Forte was one to two. Cody's Wish probably going to be two to five, even shorter. But there were three favorites who won on Saturday Forte and Elite Power being two obvious ones. And the pick five paid $1,600. I still can't believe it. Uh, a friend, I did not have it, so this isn't a humble brag, but a friend of mine did. And going into the last leg, he thought, oh, maybe I'm live for three, 400 bucks. He couldn't believe it when he saw the will pays. I still can't believe it. I don't know what to account for that, but it certainly doesn't, it makes me, much more willing after that to be willing to single Cody's wish. Yeah, I'm, I'm guessing it had to be the Finger Lakes horse that was 14, 15 to one in the second, the second to last race. It was only a five horse field. But even with Forte, Elite Power, and the last race, Joe Sharp's horse was a short price too. So yeah, three to um, uh, three to two, I think. Yeah, so those three horses win, and all you that's that's why you need, all you need is one sometimes. But I was a little shocked it paid that much as well. And we haven't really talked about Forte. I thought he was really good. He broke well in the. Um, Jim Dandy, he was in the game. Honestly, if Saudi Crown won the race, he probably would have been the one setting the pace because he broke so sharp, which was a good sign with the blinkers on. And then um, he got a little traffic jam turn for home, got his way out and just keeps winning like he usually does. Yeah, uh, and I don't mean this is disrespectful to people who noted the stat. I know all sorts of crazy stats all the time. I get it. It's interesting. I did not read one iota into Pletcher's blinkers record because so many times the blinkers is a last resort. And that clearly was not the case here. Forte was coming off a fantastic effort in the Belmont. He was going to be the Derby favorite. He won the Florida Derby. It's not like they were trying something. Clearly, in my mind, Todd saw something and was like, hey, this can help, and we're going to try it. Uh, now, it could have backfired. Saudi crown had the pace, whatever. He didn't have to win this race. But to me, that wasn't a negative at all. 
No, and he worked really well in him, too. He went right by his breeze mate in his work, and it really looked like they helped him focus more. And if you remember, I know Malathot didn't win the Shoe V last year. She ran okay against Clarier, but she was that was her first race with the blinkers on in her career, and then she went on to win the personal ensign, the race at Keeneland, the spinster, and the distaff. So he's done well. I know he, she didn't win, so technically that was a part of the one for 23 stat or whatever. But if Pletcher was going to put blinkers on that good of a horse like Malathot or Forte, I feel like – I don't know what the prices were, the average prices were, the horses he was putting blinkers on and graded stakes. But like you said with Forte, I think he knew what he was doing, and I think he knew it would help put him in the game more and focus some more. And he ran a career best 105 buyer if you're a buyer person. Yep. And uh, on to the Travers. And I, I forget where I ask you this question each week, but we'll just keep asking till they draw the race. If you're Javier, who are you taking right now? I'm taking Mage. Yeah. I don't know. Too. I don't remember what I said last week because I think <laughs> I maybe said Archangelo, but. This is probably – if Mage wins this race, he's probably three-year-old champion unless Forte or somebody goes on to win the Breeders' Cup Classic somehow. I would say if Mage wins the Derby and the Travers with a second in the um, Haskell and a third in the Preakness, I feel like unless something crazy happens, he would win. I guess you could say the same for Archangelo, though, if he won the Belmont, but I think yeah. the Derby holds more weight, so I think he should probably – I would go with Mage. I don't like horses training up to big races like this that far out, especially if you get on Twitter every day. Archangelo is working like the best horse in the world. Well, if he's working, I probably, I'm probably i not a trainer, obviously, but I maybe would have liked him to run in the gym dandy for a prep. I don't think it matters anyway because I think Forte is going to win the race regardless. But. Right. Well, a, a good second Florida Derby. But I saw Skinner's bit. going too. I know the trainer. Yeah, I mean, it's nice because it looks like um, everybody's going to show up in the Travers, and that's how it should be. And Skinner has a half-sister who produced a debut runner in today's Finger Lakes carryover. That is not something I thought would be said on this dish, but that is just fantastic <laughs> facts from you. Well, we try to cover all the New York racing here on the dish uh, and Kentucky when the time comes, but... Well, I think it's a looks like a fantastic Saturday of racing, uh, Hambletonian as well, part of that cross country pick five. So I'll be firing. I'm counting on you for the Hambletonian. So if I lose one of these three legs in my cross country pick five, I'm blaming you. You blame you. Okay. Well, and I lean on Ray Catolo and and Dean pull the pocket. So we're, we're going to hit it. I feel really good about it. Playing what you guys play. All right, that's the Paddock Prince. Big card on Friday. We talked a lot about Saturday's racing, but don't sleep on what really. Oh, and pick six cards. carryover. Tomorrow. All the cards, yeah. Pick six carryover. 194,000. Thursday's great, I'm sure. Friday with the Saratoga Oaks, uh, and then Saturday's a blockbuster. And, and then Belmar, too. So, and, and I've, not to hold your feet to the fire, but I've seen a few more brag posts about Delmar than Saratoga. So hopefully things that balance out this week. Yes, we're going to get it. We're really going to get it rolling this week. We're going to get so it rolling. Too. I, I think the weather's good this week, too. I know it's random in Saratoga, and you can't predict it, but I've, at the first glance, it looks like there's one day there's a chance of rain. So hopefully we can not have two washout cards this week. But, yeah, it's looking good for this week. It looks like the best week of racing so far. Love it. All right. Well, he's the Paddock Prince. I'm Ed. We'll be back next week. What's the feature next week, Alabama? Well, the No, four-star Dave. Okay, so we got a grade one mile race at Saratoga, mile and a quarter, colonial, turf flavor to the dish next week. In the meantime, enjoy the Whitney.